Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. Today, Ryan Rampersad will be grilling Ian R. Buck on his experiences with the NVIDIA Shield tablet. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO20. All right, Ryan, are you ready for this thing? Uh, are you ready? Because I'm grilling you about uh, your I tablet. Hope so. <laughs> yeah, so this tablet is... Um, it's, it's a little old, uh, which is why we're calling this one a post-mortem instead of a, like, review review. Um, but I think that, that post-mortems are still useful because they, like, your overall experiences with a thing over the course of its entire life can definitely inform, like, what you are looking for in the, in the, next, the next thing that you buy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so often it's impossible to know exactly like what's going to go wrong with a device, um, bef- you know, when it's only a couple of weeks old, which is the flaw in the most regular reviewing. review so- yeah, cycle, but like it's, it's kind of necessary to get most of those reviews out right. um, early on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So some quick facts about the NVIDIA Shield tablet. Um, it was released in July of 2014. Um, it came out at like $300 back then. Um, they actually they had like two different models. The 16 gigabyte model was $300 and then the 32 gigabyte model with LTE was like, I don't know, 50 or $100 more. Um, it was probably $100 more because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I decided to go with the cheaper one. Um, and I thought it was kind of funny that... Um, that this tablet released just like a matter of months before lollipop came out with material design. And so like the, the box art, the the picture of the tablet on the box has a completely different, like set of navigation buttons down there at the bottom. Oh yes. The little house. Yep. 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 Um, instead of our lovely, like circle square and triangle Hmm. the way it should be. Yeah. Um, it has an 8-inch screen that is 1920 by 1200, so that's a uh, 16 by 10. Um, just a little bit, little bit weird. You don't, uh, you don't, you don't like that? It's well, I mean, it's it's a little bit like it's it's not your standard, right? You expect most most phone screens that you get to be like 16 by 9. Sure. Um, and I think that the reason that they did a 16 by 10 is because you're more likely to be using a tablet in landscape. Than, than a phone in landscape mm-hmm. and the way that they have the ui set up the uh, navigation buttons go from being um on the short end of the screen to the long end of the screen right when... so they give you an extra ratio to hold those buttons yep, yep yep that makes sense um it was the first uh device to to feature the nvidia tegra k1 chip um and uh, NVIDIA actually did this a few times. Like, the, the predecessor to this tablet was the Shield Portable, which was that wonky-looking, like, it was a controller that had a flip-up screen. Um, so it was kind of like a Game Boy, like, like a, a Game Boy Advance SP kind of thing. But, like, the controller was, like, a full-size Xbox controller, and it ran, like, full Android. Um, and that was the first, um, let's see, that, that was the first device to run the Tegra 4 chip, I believe. Um, and so then this, this tablet was the first one with the Tegra K1. It had two gigabytes of RAM. Um, and like I said before, it came with uh, 16 gigabytes of storage or 32 gigabytes. Um, but it does have an, a micro SD card slot for expanded storage and it has stylus. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Um, and then like, uh, a year and a half later, um, in November of 2015, they came out with a kind of an updated version of, of the tablet. Um, it was called the Shield K1, and uh, it launched without the stylus um, for $200. So they knocked $100 off the price. And and then, like, the stylus was available as, like, a, a add-on, like, that mm. you could purchase separately for, like, 30 bucks or something like that, which was strange. Well, um, somebody might want it. Yeah. 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 Um, but I mean, like thirty dollars for that. Like, it didn't seem like a sophisticated piece of technology. Hey, you know? just like um, you know, just like this USB cable here. But for some <laughs> reason, Apple can still uh, sell it for four hundred dollars. Oh, I mean forty dollars. Well, I'm not sure. Yep, yep. So why did you buy this thing? So, well, I I was at a point in my college career where I was like, I haven't bought anything like major in a little while. Maybe I should go and buy something. And which is a terrible reason to buy things. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) That is a wonderful reason to buy things. 
<laughs> that is exactly how I function. I understand where you're coming from. Um, yeah, so I, I like allowed myself roughly one major purchase per semester. Um, and so this was like, like I, I decided to get this tablet um, because for one thing, I had like my first mobile devices were small tablets, right? I started off on the Nexus 7. Um, I had both models of that and I really, you know, I liked that device. I, so I knew that like a small f- form tablet was going to fit into into my usage cases, right? Um, I was also very intrigued by the NVIDIA specific features that they had in there um, because like they had started putting in these cool things to their graphics cards such as like shadow play and like um, efficient streaming using the hardware of of the uh, of the graphics card right Mm -hmm. and the shield tablet was the first tablet to have those kinds of features built into the hardware um so you know you could you could record your gameplay from the um tablet you could stream from the tablet to like twitch um you could if you owned a a pc with an nvidia graphics card you could stream pc games from that computer to your tablet um and they also had like a service where you could pay monthly to like um, be allowed to stream games from NVIDIA servers. Um, and of course, as as we know, pretty much every like game streaming service out there uh, of that kind has not done super well financially. Nope, they've pretty uh, much all dissolved and folded away. Yep, yep. Um, and of course, to, to accommodate all of these like PC games that you were going to theoretically be playing on this tablet, um, there was a wireless controller that you could buy for the tablet. Um and uh, and they also wanted you to be able to plug the tablet into a television and use it as though it was a micro console. And so it had a mini HDMI port on it. Is that and the cable that I gave you that one time? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like mentioned that offhand while I was at your house. And I was like, I don't have any mini HDMI cables. And you were like, well, I do. <laughs> so I <laughs> took that home. <laughs> and it's sitting in the drawer in front of my TV and is absolutely never used yeah no no (laughs) surprise there yeah but like um it's it's such a fascinating thing to think about now that the nintendo switch is out because the this nvidia shield tablet is in a lot of ways like a spiritual predecessor to the the switch um the whole idea of like it's a little tablet but you can use controllers with it and you can plug it into your TV, and it acts like a console in that case. But, like, it's the same games that you can be playing while you're walking around. Um, and that's, like, yeah, so so I, I like to think of the Shield tablet as kind of like a prototype to what the, what the Switch became. So, especially, especially since the Switch is also running, like, NVIDIA Tegra uh, yeah, chips in it. <laughs> so. I, I think that's one of the... Uh, a really good comparison. It's almost like... Um... Whatever's before alpha, like, uh, what's the Greek letter Z? Zeta? Okay, well, it's a Zeta type then, because... Oh, wait, no, no, the last one in the Greek alphabet is Omega. Fine. Okay, it's an Omega (laughs) type then. (laughs) Wow, that was, that's pretty bad, we should know that. Um, Yeah. So, it's like the Omega type, because it used the Tegra, it has a pretty similar form factor. Um, is it, is the screen better on that than the Switch? Um, yeah, so the Switch is like a six-inch screen at 720p. Um, yeah, I know it's it's 2017. That's kind of kind of low, but I don't think that they would have been able to run like any serious games on sure. the Switch at any higher resolution than that anyway. Yes, due to processing limitations, yep. and, and and of course you can clearly see that in the Switch because it has a huge centimeter wide and multi-centimeter long heat pipe yep. uh, and, and i'm almost certain that the shield tablet does not have an absurd heat pipe no 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 and actually i did take some uh size comparison pictures of the shield tablet next to one of my students switches um and yeah it's it's like when you when you have the joy con controllers attached to the sides of the switch um, the two tablets are fairly comparis- comparable in like the footprint that they have on the front. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the Switch is much, much thicker than the NVIDIA yeah. Shield tablet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it probably wouldn't have been a bad thing 
for the for the shield tablet if it had a uh <laughs> a, a, a heat sink because it does run a little hot sometimes is that um, is that a, one of those reasons for its exploding potential i don't i'm not sure so uh yeah <laughs> we can get into that um a little later i think okay um but yeah so back back to my reasons for buying it back then obviously we didn't know that the switch was going to be a thing like back then so i i didn't uh want to get a hipster switch necessarily um but well, yeah there, I was... there weren't really any other tablet choices it was either ipad or i guess you could have purchased the 2013 nexus 7 again but what's yeah. the point in that that's silly. right yeah um yeah, there there had been a few like Android gaming tablets that were co- that that like had um controllers kind of attached to the sides the way that like they looked a lot like what the Switch looks like with the Joy-Cons attached to the side of it. Um but those of course were like limited by the fact that gosh darn it there aren't really any Android games that are built for with controllers in mind. So that's why like Nvidia being this big company in the gaming space in you know i the hope was that they were going to be able to push forward this whole concept of like yes android can be a platform for serious games that use actual controllers and even if not if you don't have those games that are native on android you can still play your pc games on this tablet by streaming them from your from your pc Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah, I also I I noted of course that the uh Shield tablet had close to stock Android um which is uh, a pretty important thing to keep in mind for for two reasons. One the um the interface of course, if you know they're not going to like I don't like having tons and tons of skins on top of uh, Android because I don't think that they look as good. Um and also it's more likely that Nvidia would be able to um to bring out Android updates to the to the Nvidia Shield tablet in a timely manner, and of course that's not a guaranteed thing, um, <clears throat> but it actually turned out to be pretty true, as we'll see in in a little bit. Um, and then of course I have like this huge library of Android games already that I had been like acquiring through Humble Bundles, um, and I couldn't fit most of them onto my phone all at the same time. So I was like, if I just have like this tablet that is dedicated to having all my games installed, then I, you know, I could kind of compartmentalize the, like, the storage that I had with me carrying around in my mobile devices. Um, You know, use my phone for, like, storing music and podcasts, and then, like, the NVIDIA Shield tablet for storing, like, games and maybe any, like, movies that I wanted to download for a trip or something like that. Um, So that that was kind of my plan. It's a reasonable plan. Yeah. And actually that's that's definitely the part of my plan that worked out the best, I would say. <laughs> is is um the way that it complements having a phone. Mm-hmm. Um in that, you know, I can I can use this 8-inch tablet to be a bigger screen for my gaming, for my video watching, and even for my reading. Like I like having I feel like an 8-inch tablet is about the the perfect size to hold in your hand and like read through an ebook or, you yeah. know, even even like scrolling through um articles online um you know that's really interesting because you know uh, there's a lot of discussion now that uh something like the ipad mini form factor which is around eight inches Mm -hmm. people are just not buying it in a large quantity and so that, that makes you wonder is it the size or is it is it the you know limited processing power but i agree with you i think that that eight inch size is great. I remember when I had the Nexus sevens, all of mm-hmm. them, uh, <laughs> they, they, they were and nice. Some of your Nexus sevens became my Nexus sevens. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, they were nice, but they were always a little bit too, too tall and not wide enough too bezily. Mm-hmm. The shield had a really nice size. Yeah. And, and the shield, of course, didn't get rid of that bezeliness, um, but I think that they had a good approach to it. Um, so let's actually let's segue into the talking about the hardware of the um, tablet. Um, so I think that it had a really really great design for an eight inch tablet, especially from two thousand fourteen. Mm-hmm. Um, nowadays, it it definitely looks kind of dated, but um, you know what do you expect? Um, and the reason that I say that I think that they treated their bezel really well is because they have these really good sounding front-facing speakers 
on the front of this this thing um, that also double as like where you grip it with your thumbs when you're right. holding the device in landscape. Um, and actually, the the like revamped version of the uh, the tablet that came out in 2015 um, has kind of this this different like texture on the speaker grills that kind of encourages you to to hold it there um because i i think that they realized that that's exactly what was you know what Mm -hmm. that was used for yeah i think that makes perfect sense um it also has like this really nice kind of wedge shape that tapers like from the front to the back so the back of the device is a little bit smaller than the front of the device kind of similar to if you've ever seen a microsoft surface out in the wild Mm -hmm. um how those kind of kind of taper from front to back and that makes it like really nice to hold um in portrait mode with you know if you've got like two hands that you're holding it with especially um because like your 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 hand kind of curves around that that tapering um pretty nicely um obviously it's not like an ergonomic mouse or anything like that you know it's not actually following the contours of your hands Mm -hmm. but um it just gives you kind of a nice a nice way to grip it um they also a lot of people love to call the Nvidia Shield tablet like the the Nexus 7 that wasn't made by Google, right? The the successor to the Nexus 7. Um and they they definitely take a lot of like style choices from the Nexus line um cuz it's got like this soft plastic back, kind of a matte finish, right? With like all caps Shield written across it. Um very similar to to what Nexuses were doing um at that time. You know, what's kind of funny about that is that there was actually a Nexus product that could have almost been this device, which would have been the Nexus 9. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, that was... Um... But the funny thing is, its code name describes exactly what happened to it, which is Flounder. Flounder, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, well. Um, let's see, wait, was the Nexus 9 the Samsung one? Nope, HTC. That was HTC. Okay. Yep. Okay. And and so it had the same K1, and it had two gigs of memory. It had 16 or 32 gigabytes of storage. It, it had an 8.9 inch display, but it's really similar in uh, in, in other regards. Mm-hmm. But that's right. That's right. And it had the Nexus Nine had that same like giant camera aperture area that yes. the Nexus Five did. The bezels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um and yeah, mm-hmm. and then let's see. Um, did the does the Pixel C also have an a Tegra chip in it? Um, probably. That sounds right. Yes. Yeah, I think all of like all of their tablets, uh, have have done that. Anyway, anyway, um, the stylus on the Shield is um, I mean, I'm not the best person to ask if you want to use a tablet as like a drawing tool. Um, because I don't draw, um, but, uh, I can tell you that it has like kind of this chisel shaped tip, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. so like one part of it is, is pointy and then the other part's kind of like flat. And so like the brush strokes that you do when you're using, especially like the first party NVIDIA dabbler, um, program, uh, you know, the brush strokes will be wider when you're using the wider part of the stylus, um, et cetera. Um, I've had this tablet for like three years now, and I only just discovered this year that it has a handwriting recognition keyboard built in, uh, like that NVIDIA made for it. Um, and the only the only situation that I have ever used it in and have like thought that it was worthwhile um, is like if I have two apps open side by side, you know, and I'm like reading in one of them and I'm writing in the other one. Um, the keyboard, the on-screen keyboard would take up too much space mm. to be able to, like, do anything with those two. And so, like, having the handwriting keyboard, um, which is, a, you know, a significantly shorter, um, being able to just write on the screen is is good. Um, one of the really, really nice things about the stylus is that the screen can actually differentiate between the sky- stylus and your skin so um it can like ignore finger or palm inputs um if you want it to um and you can have it do that like system wide um or some of nvidia's programs some of their apps will also just do it like inside the app itself um but only on like specific 
UI elements, right? So like in the in the drawing app, um, you could have it ignore your finger inputs on the canvas itself, but still accept finger inputs for like the undo, you know, the mm-hmm. the like the the brush the tools, uh, yeah. selection tools, yeah, all that, all the menu stuff. Um, and so that's that's like a really really good touch there. <laughs> touch. Huh. <laughs> uh, um, in 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 actuality and like practically, I use the stylus almost exclusively when playing Hearthstone. Um, because like it's nice to be able to see the cards that I'm dragging around on the screen without my finger, my big fat thick fingers getting in the way of me being able to see them. Um, so that's that's what I usually use the stylus for. Yeah. So you you brought up the um, the surface, and so mm-hmm. the surface comes with a, a stylus also. Well, yeah. I guess if it comes with it or not is up for debate these days, but it did come with it at one time, just like the, the shield. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of the drawing functionality on that is actually very useful. So um, a lot of people at work have a surface as their primary computer and they're not developers. So they, the, the limited processing power is not an issue, but what they right. do get out of it is um, it's a, basically a big virtual whiteboard. So they can share their screen, go into one note and just start drawing and it's really nice, and I can see wh- how this is almost uh, three years too early to have any software that could have used it on yeah. Android. I would also say that probably this an eight inch screen is too small to really use as like a drawing yep. thing. Um, you know, like I I watched Savannah using her Surface Pro Four, which is uh, I don't know what like a twelve inch screen or something like that. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I'd have to look it up. Sounds um, about right. But yeah, so like like that works pretty well. Um and then I and then I think about like the the surface um uh, that the workstation one that you know like has that crazy yes. hinge that lets it come down almost flush with the table. Yeah. And I'm like, "Man, that now that would be a drawing experience right there." Yep. Um, but then you also think of something like um the 3DS and how it as a stylus, <laughs> although you don't maybe draw on it, you certainly do or you're 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 told to use it to click buttons, so yeah, yeah I don't know you like, can't win. Mm, mm. I mean the the 3ds had the pressure sensitive screen instead of a capacitive screen, so yeah, g- gross. Yeah, um, yeah. My biggest biggest complaint with the Shield tablet is definitely that 16 gigabytes of storage is an absolute joke. Um, and I did get an SD card to use with it, but SD cards on Android are still a hassle. Yep. Um, you know, unless you're using it for something like just straight up static files. You know, if you want to put like a whole MP3 collection onto an SD card, that'll work just fine for you. But like having to manage which apps are stored on the SD card and which ones are not. And, you know, most of the system, like all of the system apps that you have are not going to be able to be transferred over to the SD card. And many, many of the apps that you install from the play store are also not going to be able to be transferred over to the SD card. And so it's like my advice here, here's one of the universal truths that I'll take away from my, from my time with um, the shield tablet is when you're buying a device even if it says that you can use an SD card to add, like, you know, hundreds or terabytes of storage, uh, don't don't take that as a feature. Just take the amount of internal storage that it has, and that's how much storage you should think of, you know, yep. for that device. Um, so, yeah, 16 gigabytes, not really enough for me to do much with it. But like I said, this isn't my primary device, so I don't have to store a lot of the stuff that I need, you know, um, it's, it's just, I can store all of the fun things on it. So did it come with a camera? Uh, it, yeah, it's got a front facing and a back facing camera. Um, I think both of them are five megapixels. So with regards to SD cards, my, my, my vision for their purpose is to store pictures basically, hmm. and then have an easy way to get pictures off of the device into some kind of, you know, it could be a card reader on your computer sure. or at a printing kiosk at Walgreens so that you can actually print pictures. That's my vision for why SD card is in demand. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you entirely that SD card is a horrible experience for any apps because, as you said, it's a disaster on Android. And yep. it, rightfully so, because most people buy awful SD media. 
Yeah, yeah. If you've got an SD card that isn't fast enough, then the experience of trying to load an app off of that SD card is going to be freaking awful. Yep. Yeah. Um, shall we talk about software? Yes. So I definitely think that the they struck the right balance for having like stock Android with some nifty features added onto it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's because most of the nifty features are like hardware specific, Um, you know, so like having stylus, you know, like stuff in the UI, right? right? So tie-ins to their specific hardware. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They um, also being NVIDIA, of course, they have like different optimization settings for like the hardware, you know, for like, do you want it? Do you want us to be like extreme graphics processing right now? Or do you want us to be like, battery optimized (laughs) um yeah yeah um and also one of the cool things that they did was um a lot of like the crazy customization options that are like normally hidden in android but are still there um nvidia would surface those and put them into the actual settings app um so like the uh the the quick um the quick actions up Mm -hmm. you know uh when you pull down the notification tray um on stock stock android you know you have to like long press on the cog up there to like get that to be a system ui um item in in the settings app on the nvidia shield tablet it was just there already um as soon as soon as that was introduced to android um and actually in that way it kind of reminds me of like cyanogen mod because cyanogen uh, typically would take those kinds of things and kind of like push them to the forefront. Yeah. Uh, there was also, um, in terms of like Android updates, um, I was, I'm was i pretty, pretty darn happy with the, uh, the experience that I had um, and actually kind of surprised. Um, so major versions of Android would usually come to this tablet roughly four months after they were released on like a Nexus device. Um, and that's... I mean, it's not amazing, but the but thing you got that, updates. So that's amazing. Yeah, that yeah, it, it, yeah. Um, and the really, really amazing thing is, okay, think about when this device came out, July of 2014. Yep. The version of Android that was currently available at the time was um, the version that came out with the Nexus Five, right? Because the Nexus Five came out um, the fall previous to that. So mm-hmm. I, I, I think what was that like 5.0 or something like that? 4.4. Um. So the yeah, I don't know. I, I, any, it's been way, too long. It, um, so, so this device launched with the same version of Android that the Nexus 5 launched with. The Nexus 5, which is like, you know, Google's own first-party device, Google stops giving updates to their Nexus line after two years, right? So they get like three major versions of, of the Android's uh, platform. Yep. The NVIDIA Shield tablet... Uh, has gotten the latest version of Android. What are we on, 7 now? Yep. Yeah, NuGet. Um, I have NuGet on my Shield tablet. You don't have NuGet on the Nexus 5. No. So it, it or, has or gotten... either uh, of the two Nexus 7 tablets, and I don't even know if oh, the yeah, Nexus yeah. 9 is even supported anymore, <laughs> to be honest, either. Right. Yeah. So, like, NVIDIA has been incredibly good about supporting their... Um, their hardware with software updates going forward which um makes me really really hopeful about like the 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 android tv box the Mm. shield um android tv that they have as well i think that'll probably continue to get updates um into the future so why do why do you think uh nvidia was able to be so responsive and and google's just sort of eh we'll stop eventually um it's probably that NVIDIA doesn't have a new tablet coming out every, mm-hmm. you know, a new phone coming out every year. No reason year. to push. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I would say in general, like tablets tend to, like people tend to hold on to tablets for longer than they tend to hold on to their phones. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Um, but still like. Goodness gracious! The that the Nexus line was like the flagship for Android. Um, hopeful, like, are they going to stop supporting the Pixel as well after two years? Like, that's um, yes, actually, that is confirmed. Two years of software <sighs> updates and three years of security updates. Um, yeah. So you know that sounds bad, but I mean, you know, it's not really Google who's doing this. It's actually Qualcomm, our good friends. 
at Qualcomm. So uh, what they do is they stop releasing driver updates for after two years of the chip being on the market. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah. So it might be easier for NVIDIA to continue to release updates when they are the ones actually making the drivers. Right. So they can just do the 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 the. An- Android integration and the driver update at the same time, and they can just push it. Um, whereas Google doesn't have Qualcomm support on that. Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Th- thanks for bringing that up because I had not thought of that angle. Yeah, it's uh, a shame. To this conundrum. Mm-hmm. It's a weird, weird world. Yeah. Um, speaking of those security updates, the monthly, the monthly security updates yeah. that uh, Google pushes to their Nexus line, and and you know, hopefully everybody else does as well. No. Um, I've been getting usually like three or four of those a year, um, and usually it's like about a month old when it when it comes to the tablet. So like I actually earlier this week I got like the April, um, I think I think it was the April security update came, um, and I think a lot of times those get pushed out um, simultaneously. Like I think that the reason that Nvidia does those smaller updates is because they find some other hardware issue that they have to fix. Sure, you know? and they just bundle them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but, I wonder. I wonder about those updates too because the the Pixel gets them, and Google doesn't. So what's weird about the security updates is they don't even cause a new build version to trigger or version mm-hmm. number. I mean, mm-hmm. and and I've always assumed the reason they do that is so that it doesn't humiliate the OEMs. Oh, they need to be humiliated. Well, I know. I agree. They absolutely do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking of, like, l- like hardware issues, bug fixes and stuff, um, the- there was a period of software updates that was kind of rocky for the NVIDIA Shield tablet. Like, um, I forget which year it was. It may have been, like... It it was it was like you know the the January or February after a major release. Well, for, it, it for would Android. have been it would have been post Lollipop because Lollipop was notorious for its poor memory <laughs> implementation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there there were like there were a lot of people complaining in in Nvidia's forums about uh performance issues um that were introduced with like new ver- major versions, and so Nvidia actually like pulled one of their updates and then worked on it for another like month or two. And then like re-released it, yeah. Um, and yeah, but th- things things have worked out <laughs> uh, in in the end. Um, do you want to talk about performance? Uh, I could talk about performance. Tell me about the battery life of this thing. Yeah, so it's definitely better than like my phone. Uh, but it well, is an eight inch tablet, so it had better be better than my yeah. phone. Um, but in, for a, for like. A small tablet like that, I feel like it's been pretty meh. Um, it, it was like, it was pretty atrocious, honestly, when I first got the device. Um, but then, like, uh, which which version of Android was it that we got the, like, they they would put it into a doze mode if you hadn't six. turned on the screen for a while. Yeah. Um, so that was one of the big, uh, one of the big updates to this tablet that really made it like work. Um, is the fact that I could like leave it on my bedside table, come back at the end of the day, and it would still have a good amount of battery life. So I thought you were going to say I could put it on my bedside table and then come back to it at the end of the week, and it would still have battery life. No, yeah, no. So it's still nowhere near as good as like the school iPad that I. That's insane. You know, I don't touch it. Uh, I don't touch that iPad for like a whole two weeks or whatever. And I open it up. I'm like, oh, twenty percent. Okay, yeah, I cool. could still. Yeah. Um, no, like the, yeah, it, it doesn't last nearly that long, but I have had times where I forget to charge it for, um, you know, a couple of days and I open it up. I'm like, oh yeah, I could, I can use this for the evening before putting it and plugging it in, you know, before yeah. bedtime kind of thing. Yep. Um, and, and actually that's, um, there were several things that came out in Android updates that, um, were really necessary to make this tablet form factor really make sense. Um, you know, so like I'm talking, uh, side by side screen, Mm -hmm. um, uh, side app, side by side multitasking. Um, yeah, the battery optimizations for like, um, for when you haven't used the device for a really long time. Um, what other things? Um, 
Memory management. Memory. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Um, being able to treat SD cards as if they were internal storage. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the big features that I was excited about in, uh, I think it was Android 6. Um, yeah. Um, if, if you're worried about battery life uh, on the Shield tablet, definitely don't use the features where you can stream or record gameplay um that chews through battery life really really fast um unsurprisingly um and as it turns out as excited as i was about being able to like record gameplay and stuff i i had big plans for you know posting tons and tons of um of uh gameplay from from my tablet on yeah. youtube well what they as they say what is old is new again yeah um and as it turns out the combination of like the battery life uh not doing so great when trying to record stuff but also like i don't really want to put in the effort to like film all this stuff and make good footage while gaming on my tablet mm-hmm. you know like i would much rather be sitting down at my computer you know it like in a kind of a studio setting kind of right. thing uh to to like work on something like that mm-hmm. um but yeah, so I, I haven't been using those features very much. Um, other people might might get good uh, good mileage out of those features, but I haven't I haven't used them a whole lot. Um, and the final thing that I have to say about the battery is um, boom. Oh wait, oh no, that was the uh, Note Seven. Oops, yeah, no. Mind. Well, so my my tablet actually got recalled for the exact same thing that the Note Seven did, but like two years earlier so july of 2015 um this was like yeah like four months or whatever after i had bought this tablet um it gets recalled because there was a battery issue and they could catch fire oh and so you um, could say that it might have been a fire tablet it was (laughs) oh man um but yeah like i i was pretty impressed with their with their recall process you know i just uh uh, I went to a website that they had put up, like put in the serial number for it to find out if mine was one of the one of the ones that was affected. Mm-hmm. Um, and since it was, they like asked me for my um, address and they sent me a, a this very, very elaborate box that had several layers of like cushioning and probably a, like thermal padding and right, stuff. In so there. it wouldn't explode. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I sent it off to them, and uh, and then they sent me. I don't remember if they sent me a new one before I sent off the old one, but um, but yeah. I, either way, um, I had a new one before long, and um, and so yeah, I've um, I've I've had two different hardware models of this thing, and I've actually like. I've reinstalled the operating system several times across those two devices because, like, at one point, I was really, really excited for the new version of Android. It was probably Android 6 Mm -hmm. that I really wanted those new features. And so I, like, installed Cyanogen on it only to discover that Cyanogen was still on Android 5 as well. (laughs) And I, I, because I, like, miscounted the uh, the Cyanogen numbers. Yeah. Um, That's easy to do. Don't worry. Yeah. And, uh, And so that actually... Uh, installing cyanogen on it was one of the ways that I discovered um, one of the big flaws in performance on this tablet. Um, And that is uh, like in terms of, of like responsiveness of the UI um, this tablet cannot handle having like anything encrypted. Right. Um, So I didn't realize that this was an issue at the beginning when I first got the tablet because I got it and immediately like told it to encrypt itself as I was like setting up the device. Right. Um, and so it chugged along and it was a little slow and usually what it had problems with were things like what what I would classify as context switching. Right. Mm -hmm. So anytime that I had to like switch from one app to another or, um, or loads like, you know, a significant amount of data, um, from disk or from 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 flash. Yeah. 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 Um, and it seemed to me also that like it, it, uh, it wiped apps from memory pretty darn aggressively, you know, Mm -hmm. like, so I would be using 
two apps and you know i'd be switching between them and it would have to like reload one of the apps and then everything would just like slow down right um so when when it would slow down was that in the form of just not doing something quick or was that actual animation jitter or actual Actual, yeah actual animation jitter so like i like it would have like i wouldn't be able to pull down like the notification tray you know even system level things i yeah um and when i installed cyanogen all those problems went away and so i was like oh oh cyanogen you're amazing this is great like you you make things run so much faster and then like a few weeks later i was like oh yeah right cyanogen i never told you to like encrypt the uh the device i should have you do that so i told it to do that and then it started getting slower Mm -hmm. and slower and slower and so then i was like oh wait a minute hmm so then i was like well i i can't i'm not going to just wipe the device again and reinstall cyanogen um yet i'm going to wait and see whether cyanogen gets android 6 or whether like nvidia comes with android 6 first right. and nvidia came with android 6 first and so i re like i wiped cyanogen from it and reinstalled the uh the uh official image right and so then that time i didn't encrypt the disk and everything was happy and then <laughs> Later on, I got an SD card for it because I was like, I, you know, okay, 16 gigs, not good enough. Um, and so I, so I got this SD card and I told it to format it as, as if it was like, you know, internal storage. And as it turns out, I think that, that is encrypted as well, which makes sense because like you can't use the SD card in any other device when you have it formatted in this way. Um, and so that has a ton of problems. I think specifically when you're loading apps that are stored on on that disk. But because of because you don't have control over which apps are stored on the SD card and which ones are in, in internal, you know, that's one of the features, right? The features mm-hmm. uh, is that you don't have to worry about, like, moving things over from the SD card to the internal storage or anything like that, right? Android will just take care of it for you. So then it became, like, totally unpredictable when I was going to be having these kinds of problems. Um and uh and recently um like a couple of months ago i think um i i told it like okay forget this like wipe that sd card get rid of it we're gonna just treat it as as a regular sd card um and actually for some reason i haven't been able to get it to recognize the sd card again so i can't use it it's it's just a 16 gigabyte tablet right now um but yeah that um it's running just fine now you know it's running quite quickly but like i have spent so much time over the last three years using this tablet that was running way way slower than it could have been and i feel so stupid now (laughs) well so it's funny funny you mentioned that uh that the slowing and the jittering because it's very similar to what happened when the nexus 9 launched Mm. so it, it experienced the same kind of uh memory throttling uh, it experienced the same kind of jitter when um, app switching. Um, just overall, it, it experienced a, a lot of system level hardship, and then it also experienced a ton of build quality issues because, well, you know, Nexus devices. So yeah. I, th- I think I think um, you know it could have something to do with Nvidia and their initial set of drivers. Um, and and as, as these are cheaper devices. And they're not flagship phones, for example, running seven hundred dollars or more. Mm-hmm. Um, they probably did actually just use cheaper flash. Yeah, yeah. And if I recall correctly, that was the problem that the Nexus, the original Nexus Seven, had. Yep. As well. Yeah. Yep. Bad, bad old sucky cheap flash. Mm-hmm. Um. So the the lesson that I'm taking away from that is if you get a device that doesn't encrypt the storage by default don't force it to do that yeah because there was probably a reason that the manufacturer decided not to do that well that's a funny story too then because when the nexus 6 was coming out um i think i think uh lollipop was launching and the nexus 6 was supposed to be the first phone that would um use lollipop's enforced encryption model right but and and they told us that at I.O., that the the phone with Lollipop on it will be encrypted by default. Yay! Well, little did we know that the Nexus 6 was so bad <laughs> that they decided to not do it that year. They waited until next the year after. Right. Yep. So, and, they, and then they went on to encrypt the Nexus 6 anyway, because they... Ugh. 
<laughs> yes, I agree with your idea. Do not encrypt if you don't have to encrypt it by default. Um, I think I think that 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 whole thing about um, it, like mo- most people would have never done what you did, mm-hmm. flashing it, trying it, encrypting it. So yeah, yeah, you know, you know you, it, it's hit or miss on whether that would happen to somebody else, but you never know. Yeah, and and I mean, if if it did happen to somebody else, like obviously, I was having trouble initially by my because of my own actions, right? Because yeah. I forced it to encrypt, but like I was able to figure out what was going on also because I flashed the entire device and installed a custom ROM, yeah. which is something that is not going to happen with the vast majority of no. users. Yeah. Definitely not. Um, I would also like to note that being a a, a small tablet, um, almost all of the small tablets that I've had, I have had pretty bad luck with them <laughs> in terms of like mm, breaking them. Oh, yeah. So way back in the day, the Nexus Seven, uh, I dropped one of those. Actually, it fell out of my pocket from, like, just chair height and hit the ground and, like, got a crack clear across the middle of it, right? And for because of the way that the digitizer was, like, integrated into the glass of that device, it could no longer receive touch inputs on the bottom half of the screen, which was ridiculous. So then I ended up getting a replacement from you, Ryan. Yep. And then I had that for a while, and I, I, uh, it took me a while to break that one, but I also <laughs> broke it just by like dropping it on the freaking sidewalk, and it just, like <laughs> the entire screen shattered. Um, yeah. So that was the end of that Nexus Seven. Uh, <laughs> now for the, for um the Nvidia Shield tablet, um. You remember how I, I I mentioned that it was uh recalled and I got a second Nvidia Shield tablet? Right. What do I do like 2 months after uh, I get my replacement one? Oh, well, I drop it. Uh, oh, of <laughs> course remember, you do. And I remember exactly what I was doing when I dropped it because um we were playing uh a game of Space Team, which is where like um you get a bunch of uh mobile devices um tethered to each other, you know, either over the Wi-Fi network or vi- via Bluetooth and um you're acting as like the bridge crew on a spaceship, right? And so like people like uh, different people will see different commands on their screen and those commands are to like fiddle with different stuff, but you may not have the stuff on your own device that you need to fiddle with. So you need to yell at somebody else in the group like, "Hey, you need to do this such and such a thing." Um but you don't know exactly who has the other thing. So it becomes like a giant shouting match, right? And one of the things that can happen is there's a bunch of asteroids coming. Everybody needs to shake their device oh my god so i was holding this big eight inch tablet and i was like shake 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 and whoop it goes right out of my hands and lands on the hard floor and luckily luckily this one um it only broke like the the bottom corner of uh of the screen and the digitizer is not integrated with the glass in this one Hmm. so i can it still accepts touch inputs down there um and most of the time i don't actually notice that those that that you know the the glass is broken down there because I usually read stuff with like a dark background. Right. Um, so like white text on a bl- bl- dark background, I can't actually see those black lines, um, the spider web shape. <laughs> yeah. You need to be really careful with your, your glass devices. I do. I do. Oh, that's so bad. And it's not like, and it, it's, it's like, I would never put a, a case on a seven or eight inch tablet. Like, because I don't just carry those around like, you know, while I'm walking down the street kind of thing, you know? Right, right, totally. Um, most of the times that I'm using it, I'm like sitting on the couch or whatever. Um, and so, and and I also uh, am a little like cavalier with it, right? I'll just like toss it over onto the bed or whatever. Yeah. And like, that's, I mean, I guess it's kind of risky because it could bounce off. But like, I'm 95% sure that's not going to hit the ground. <laughs> it's that last 5% that gets you every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's mm. my, it's my own darn fault. That's if okay. You, if you're more careful with it, then, um, then you, then you won't have any problems. Something about international backup day or something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just ask Andrew about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall I have, I've really, really enjoyed having it. Um, I love using it as like my e-reader. Um, and actually for like, uh, for comic books in particular, it's a, it's almost exactly the right size for like, you know, one page of yeah. a comic book kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and uh, which you know even though like Comixology is really really good with their like you know one panel to one panel zoom feature you know so you can read a comic on a on a phone mm-hmm. um, it's still so much better to just have the whole screen the whole right. page better context yeah 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 um, you know watch it like I I. Now that YouTube Red is a thing, um, I really like using the tablet to download a series of YouTube videos to just like you know watch on a car trip or on a plane trip or whatever. Um, so it's it's like it's my go-to media consumption device, right? It's not like it's not my main messaging device because it's not with me in my pocket at all times. It's not my like creation device right because I do, it doesn't have like a keyboard attached to it and i would never like get a case for it that has like a keyboard attachment you know i wouldn't try to use this thing as like right. a, a laptop uh, yeah replacer um it's just it's like a perfect in-between device and i think that like a larger tablet like you know a standard sized ipad is too big for to to really use that way right. um i think that the eight inch tablet is is in the exact right spot for that yeah um now, if eh, if I suddenly like totally broke it and couldn't get it fixed, would I replace it with another like similar eight inch tablet? I'm not sure because it it is like it's it's a luxury, honestly. You know, having this in between kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but while just I have a, it, just get a bigger phone. <laughs> you keep telling me that, but dude, I really want to be able to like touch most of the screen with just one thumb. Um, get a bigger hand. I, you know, uh, yeah, that's, I need, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love telling people when they can't like reach things up on shelves. I'm like, just grow some longer legs. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, but I don't, I don't think that having a seven or eight inch tablet is like a necessity for most people. No, definitely yeah. not. It's definitely like the the fourth or fifth electronic device that you should buy. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> to, that's, that's like four to electronic devices too many for most people. For to most be people, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, know, that sounds Ryan. pretty good. Yeah. You got any other questions for me? Um, so Nintendo doesn't want anybody to make any more of these, and and, and so if, oh, if yeah. Nintendo... It's very, very unlikely that NVIDIA is going to come out with another Shield tablet at, now that the Switch is a thing. And and so let, just, let's just pretend uh, the Switch flops and it goes away and never comes back. Hmm. Uh, would you buy another one if NVIDIA made it? Yeah, probably. Um, and, and as I said during our Nexus special about the Switch, like, that is... The big, the big reason that I wouldn't get a Switch is because it is just for games. And I really don't like limiting myself. You know, I don't like having mm-hmm. hardware that is just for one specific thing. Yeah, you want something um, more general purpose. Yep, yep. And, and, like, the exception for that is, like, really cheap things like, um, you know, the Chromecast sure. family of devices, right? I can I can spend $35 to have a little thing plugged into my television so that it's just nice and convenient for me to yep. be able to throw things up there on the screen without mm-hmm. having to deal with a keyboard. Um, but, no, for, like, a $300 device, um, it definitely has to be general purpose for me yeah um, that's and, totally reasonable and i don't think enough people believe in that kind of thing mm-hmm. so i'm glad you do yeah and and like yeah the nvidia shield tablet um fills yeah fills the need of being able to like do stuff with it but also being able to game with it if i want um a quick note about the wireless controller for the shield tablet um i had very very bad mileage with that controller um it, uh, you know, like you use it wirelessly with the tablet, um, and you can also plug it into um, a PC and use it as a regular controller there, um, you know, but you have to like plug it into a micro USB cable, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I didn't realize about it is that you can only do that if you have an NVIDIA graphics card in that PC because it it like interfaces with um the GeForce uh yep. um you know driver like um manager thingy yep. um and i plugged it into a pc that didn't have a graphics card in it once and ever since then i don't know did it like mess up the firmware on this thing or something because it could not connect to 
anything after that. Like, I think I managed to get it to connect to the Shield tablet once or twice, and the Shield tablet was like, ah, I've got a software update for this controller. Let me just push that over to the controller. And then it would, like, you know, the controller would, like, restart itself, and then it couldn't connect again. And, like, ugh, I had to I had to throw away the $60 controller because I couldn't use it anymore. That's terrible. Um, yeah, it, that was bad. And I don't know if that is a common thing or if i just had really bad luck with that controller yeah that sounds pretty bad um mm. but yeah so like it, yeah if mm, if if they really wanted this to be a tablet that could be used um for game like for serious gaming i think that a better i think that they would have to really take a, a leaf out of the switch's book and have like controllers attached to the sides of it kind of thing um and if they could figure out some way to do that while also making the tablet like still be usable as a normal tablet when you're not gaming with it um you know they may have to make them be detachable the way that the switches are right um but yeah like that that i think is the ideal for me i think that nintendo really did that right yep um and uh, so, yeah, if, if NVIDIA wanted to make another one of these shield tablets, they would have to, yeah, they'd have to take notes. <laughs> well, they know, how, they, 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 I'm sure they already have the blueprints. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's pretty good. I'm glad you liked it and mm -hmm. glad it worked and, out. And I'm still using it. Like, um, you know, even if it doesn't get like the next major version of Android, um, I'll probably keep using it for quite a while because it's not like, yeah, it's not, it's not like it's my daily driver, you know? Right, yeah. And, and, and at this point, all of the good features are there. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, and and Google didn't announce anything this year that was really like tablet focused. Exactly. Um so yeah, that is that is one thing that uh, I guess this the Android tablets in general suffer with is that like most apps that are on Android don't have user interfaces that uh are built with a a larger screen in mind, you know? Right. Yeah. Um so I just feel like I'm using a very large phone, you, you know, if I switch over to like Hangouts or something like that. Um, yeah. That's exactly how it feels on Hangouts, yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Well, that sounds pretty good then. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining me, Ryan. Yeah, where can we find you, Ian? And yeah, so um, if you want to find me on the internet, you can uh, go to Twitter and search up Ian R. Buck. That's, uh, that's where I exist. Also, um, ianrbuck.com is where it, hopefully sometime this summer I will revamp that website and actually start putting stuff that I make uh, up there so that you'll be able to find everything. It's um, not secure. Oh my gosh, yeah, we've got to so, fix this. So Let's Encrypt failed to <sighs> renew earlier this year, and I have not bothered to go and solve that problem yet, because I also switched the Linode uh, server from the ten dollars tier to the five dollars tier, which apparently changed like the public keys that I used to, to SSH. Oh into... my god! So I. <laughs> Need to need to go and do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryanmar, and of course on https colon slash slash ryanmarpersed.com. <laughs> because that's not secured either. No, it is secured. Oh, it is. Oh, did you say the yes? Okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and if you are interested in other podcasts of ours, um, yeah, of course, Second Opinion is our reviews show. Um, we have several other shows on our network as well, so go and check that out at thenexus.tv. Um, you can find us on Twitter at the Nexus TV. Um, and if you have feedback about like this specific episode, either uh, yeah, hit us up on Twitter or you can email us at the Nexus TV at gmail.com. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a good one.